Victoria, what is your position here? Technically, I'm a waitress and as manager. What are you employed as? A waitress. A waitress. But then you manage as well? Sometimes. Why? Because no one else is here to do it. Wow. Why do you stay here? I think it's a loyalty thing. I've been here since before we even opened. So I want to see this place succeed. And I want to be able to say I'm so proud of the place I work at. And how are you feeling right now? Embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And used. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jermaine is such a good person. He's not a bad guy at all. At all. And I want to help him as much as I can. And I've put so much time and my own money into this place. Sorry, your own money? Yeah. What does that mean? I bought ice this past week because our ice maker doesn't work. It came out of my pocket. Jermaine, can I just have Two minutes on my own with the team, please. Can you get some fresh air? Just go for a walk, please. Oh, boy. You're now buying items for the restaurant. Yeah. I mean, that's beyond loyal. He's the owner. You're not the owner. Whitney, why has Jermaine lost his way? He's just never... I don't think he never really had it. Leadership, I can't say that that's ever been anything that Jermaine has. Ever? He's... Why would a guy that can't be assertive, can't be a leader, can't motivate, why would you open a restaurant of all the businesses in the world? He just wanted to make his parents feel proud of him. Make his parents feel proud with this incarnation. Oh, man. I didn't want him to open a restaurant, to be honest. I told him, like, no, I think this is a bad idea. Let me go get to my Come in. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Very depressing. Jermaine, do you have any idea how to run a restaurant? Not a clue. Not a clue? This is Major League. This is money running out the door. Costs that we burn to keep the lights on and the stoves hot. It's insane. Like I said, I didn't understand what I was getting myself into until I was already in it. So I've been trying to Whitney wing it ever since. Whitney said, don't do it. I said I'm here to help. I am going to start teaching you, but you need to step up. Otherwise, there's no point in me being here. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Are you scared of him? I've definitely been scared several times. Somebody can get hurt, seriously. You should not be walking in fear. You should not be living your lives like that. Absolutely. I want you to speak up so Brad can hear this, because he needs to understand how low we've got. Yes, sir. I'm going to get them in. Gentlemen, sit down. Brad, you need to know what the fuck is going on here. Yeah. You may be running Bruce Gears, and that's the little shiny jewel in the crown. Big fucking deal. Because right now, you're a busy idiot. You're taking money from there to keep this place open, whilst this guy puts himself in an early grave. Months ago, you got a text based on his behavior. The night when we all quit, when Steven yelled at us, it was a disaster. What happened that night? We were all counting our money after hours, just waiting to go home. And he was extremely drunk. And he was just telling us that Brewski's is better and that we weren't doing a good job. And so we all just quit and walked out and left him here because, I mean, we were all hurt. We didn't want to work here anymore after that happened. The violent outbursts, the heavy drinking, the smashing up the tables. Every member of staff in here is petrified. And you're ignoring it. Uh, but last time I remember throwing tables, I remember everybody laughing. But yeah, sure, they're petrified. Well, when I get that text about his behavior and I talk to him about it, he says, well, it was blown out of proportion or I'm going to change or this and that. And I take his word for it. It's very frustrating that 
you haven't done anything about it. And you think it's funny? No, I don't think it's funny. I think these people have been repeating these things over and over in their minds so often that they think it's the truth. I haven't heard anybody say anything that they've done wrong yet. For every wrong thing I've done up here, I've done 100 good things. But when you do things yourself, it's like stapling fabric that doesn't even match the booth to the really? booth. Really? How about that patio out there that's got a wood deck? How about the roof over it? How about the hole in the wall right there that we can serve people through the patio now? It's just like, well, we don't clean up around here because the owner punched a hole in the wall back in 2007. Well, guess what the owner also did? He built that damn wall. You know, if I build a sandcastle, I'll kick it over if I want. You're the owner. An absent owner. Well, I just think everybody just needs to look in the mirror for a minute. It ain't my fault that these are all alcoholics up here. You're telling me that the staff are alcoholics? Yes. Fact. Uh -huh. You can't just stand there and blame your fucking staff. I, I'm, uh, you know what? The Come on. Stops on me. Where it's is my your fault. responsibility? I've made mistakes. I probably shouldn't be punching nose. I probably shouldn't be kicking chairs. I probably shouldn't be drinking like I have. You probably shouldn't be open, Stephen. Cut the bullshit. You're heading for the rocks. You're taking everybody down with you. And you're just sat there watching it happen. And if you were a friend, you'd get him help months ago. I came here to help you. But deep down inside, I don't know if I can. The clock is ticking. We've got some big issues here. The staff are the foundation of any restaurant. So can you two give me five minutes with the staff? Do you mind? Sure. Thank you. Who's in charge? Honestly, no. not really anyone. We have no guidance. We have Katie, who is like the main person here right now, like the day to day. We don't have a general manager. Or a head chef. Yeah, unbelievable. I would like to know what the problems are. Katie, you got really upset at Hell on Wheels. Where does this start? Help me to understand. He leaves. It's like he's abandoned us. And then when he does come back in, it's a showboat. It's everything's fine, da 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 da. Wow. I don't know if it's just because he's inexperienced, if he doesn't want to face the problem, if it's too much of a burden on him. Right. Um, I don't know. The ownership has given up on themselves, the restaurant, and the staff. And that's honestly, I think, the reason why we stick around is just because we this... We stick for each other. The, yeah, we cool. really do stay for each other, man. We could go get jobs anywhere else, but... Let me tell you something. You all are the reason why I'm here. <laughs> now, I know it may seem tough, but understand, I've got your back, OK? OK. Sit down, please. I've had a, an amazing chat with your staff and what I've heard is pretty shocking. There's no leadership, there's no structure. I mean, if I'm not here, if I'm gone half of the month... I'm gonna interrupt you. Let's talk about you not being here. Okay, not by choice, I'm working. Uh, but you have a restaurant that's failing and you're not here. Again, not by and then, choice. And then there's no infrastructure. What's that? You have no management. You put all this money into the restaurant, yet you're chasing dreams elsewhere, and this doesn't seem to be the number one priority, yet it's siphoning a lot of money. If I was to come here and just put everything into this restaurant, we wouldn't be in a house next month. You're missing my point. You're not here. You're not helping when you are here. I disagree with that. Why do you disagree? Because you're not actually hands-on. You can't expect to run a business properly when you're not here. You're not running the business. Well, that's not true. What little business is left, your staff are running it, but they're not empowered to run it properly. That's not true, though. That's not true. You are so delusional. I disagree with that. Angelica. We don't know how to run a restaurant. You don't know how to run it. I appreciate your honesty. You're absolutely right. I've had enough bullshit for one day. I've got 24 hours to fix this place, and that seems a million miles away. You need to man up and not disappear. Get your priorities straight. It's as simple as that. Now, I'd like to hear from you. Tim, what's wrong with Southern Kitchen? Communication here is the biggest issue. We need to all be on the same page as a team. But where does that miscommunication come from? It's between Chelsea, Shane, and Kellen. They argue a lot when they get into the kitchen. It's just me, my mom, and my sister pretty much trying to do everything. You also have to take accountability and responsibility, too. You can't just throw it all on the ownership. 
In defense of the waiters, I was asking where my plate was, and then it was a, your plate is coming, don't worry about your plate, stop asking about your plate. They're sending food out on different tickets, so the waiters don't know which plate to grab. I didn't see Shane in the dining room at all. Is she always in the kitchen? Most of the time, yeah. But she's not a chef. Yeah, I try to get her out of the kitchen. They try to get her out of the kitchen, but then they don't do it properly when she's not back there. And what I hear right now, yeah, okay, there's a little bit of miscommunication that may happen. But you're also miscommunicating. <laughs> it's communication as a team. We're a team. We all sinking each other down. It ain't just Kellen, Shane, and Chelsea. You're all not communicating. You're too busy in the serving station talking and laughing. Or too busy at the hostess station chopping it up. Chelsea, are you saying that the staff are lazy? Absolutely. They can be. And then they can come in here and sometimes and they can work their tails off. Like we've all gotten too comfortable. We've known these kids for a long time. Six, seven years. They're like our family. And that's how we treat them. And because we treat them like that, sometimes I feel like they get a little lax. But they're here to work. Are they? We've known these kids for a long time. They're like our family. And because we treat them like that, sometimes I feel like they get a little lax. But they're here to work. Are they? I know when it's a lot of playing going on. Everybody's getting too comfortable, and then when you say something to them, it becomes a problem. You know, I come here to work, and I come here to make sure the work I'm doing is a direct reflection of the establishment I'm working for. It seems in order for us to have an effective team, we need to all be on the same page. Owners need to be able to communicate in order for our teams to follow. Teams need leaders and leaders need structures. It sounds like there's no structure in here whatsoever. Amal, can you go and get me uh, Shane, please, downstairs? Danza, would you describe this environment as a positive work environment? No. No. It's not positive at all. Why not? Oh, uh, sometimes you come in, you don't even want to come in. Sometimes you're ready, like, all right, we're going to get screamed at today. It's tough when you've got no direction, no leadership, and you're frazzled on a daily basis. Shane, in your mind, What's wrong with the place? Um, people aren't taking the job seriously, and they don't see it as their livelihood because they've been with me so long. We've always made payroll. Whether I had to borrow from my mom, whether I could get it from a credit card, we've always paid them. And I gave them money when their families were down, loaned them money. So it has become a thing of disrespect towards me and my family. And then when I started screaming and hollering about it, it's like, well, what's wrong with her now? She lost her mind. Any member of staff that is being rude, disrespectful, why are you employing them? They need to work, you know? So I don't want to harm anybody's life, you know? You're running a restaurant, not a charity. I've got so many problems to deal with. How did we find ourselves in this situation? Our father's an alcoholic and he's no help. I'm being honest. Right. He bought this restaurant thinking he was about to die. It was kind of like a... Family legacy. And yet none of you knew how to run it. It was thrown in our laps, Chef. None of us have had real training. Things aren't properly done on a regular basis. We've been winging it for seven years. No one's ever sat down with me and taught me food costs. I've learned it on my own, what I know. I can understand that you were a novice seven years ago, but you still can push yourself. I need to be a better boss. I know I'm, I'm not good at it. Logan, you're 20, right? I wouldn't dream of throwing any of my 20-year-olds in a mess like this. What keeps you here? I have a little dream. I can see this going further. I'm trying to help out my family. I'm trying to get us to a better spot. I'm trying to make a dream. Logan will go way and beyond. I wanted to step up and make a change. I really did. And Logan, in your mind, who is the biggest problem in the restaurant? It's Autumn. Like, I can't account for anything Autumn's ever made. I'm not a cook, Logan! It's not being a cook. You own part of the restaurant. Part owner of a restaurant. You're supposed to know all aspects of the restaurant. Can I speak up? Yes, please. He's outside smoking pot. OK, I was going to try to keep this stuff back. 
I'm not ashamed of Smoking me. Smoking pot. It's legal in how many states now? Stop trying to throw my shit out there. What about you? What are you doing for this family? Nothing. You're what taking you advantage. I'm coming here you every show day. up. You show I... your face. You don't get an award for that. I didn't say I get an award. You don't even get a pin on your shirt for that. But I'm 20% owner. In the beginning, you said you didn't want anything to do with this place. You told us how you wished it. Burned out. Bull crap. How you're gonna laugh at us when it failed. Bull crap. You honestly said that to you? As soon as she saw the, the cash they made at the end of the night, she said, I'm on board. Bull crap. So they know how crazy you are for your tips. No, I'm not. She's chased customers out of the door because they didn't leave enough tip. What? Is that right? You chase customers there? Yes, I, I... Oh my God. When there's days I need to work, and she'll tell me, you're not working tomorrow. Cut it out. Philip's working. And take my spot for me. But why is your auntie putting Phil in front of you? Because they're in a relationship. Oh. oh, God. What? Is that right, Phil? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Sleeping with a line cook, getting these hours in front of your own families, you like, there's a huge conflict of interest. This is my third time back. I done quit three times. The only reason I'm back this time... Phil, to be honest, I know why you're back. If it's up to me, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even be back. If you don't want to be here, right. do everybody a favor and go. Thank you. You want to say goodbye to your girlfriend? See y'all. How long has this relationship with your sister been toxic? Our whole lives. Then why are you in business together? Because we're family. That is not a good enough reason. Everything's put in this. There is no plan B. This has to work. This is all we have. It's holding up three households. Amber, 